Sure. Meanwhile, two drones reportedly targeting another U.S. base in Syria overnight. The Pentagon confirmed yesterday that there has been at least 27 attacks on U.S. troops in the Middle East. And that just in the past two weeks, the U.S. also announcing plans to deploy an additional 300 troops to the region yesterday. They reportedly specialize in explosive ordnance disposal and communications. Joining me right now is Foundation for Defense of Democracy senior fellow, retired U.S. Army Rear uh, Admiral Mark Montgomery. Admiral, thanks very much. For being here today. We want to get your take on all of these attacks on U.S. bases in the Middle East. How do you see it? Well, thank you for having us. It's obviously being carried out by Iran's proxies. They're targeting us in places they've targeted us in the past, in uh, Iraq and Syria. Uh, we've been fortunate so far that the counter rocket and mortar systems around these bases have worked effectively and uh, shot down the vast majority of them. But there have been, you know, over soldiers and airmen injured in these attacks. Uh, we need to more directly and explicitly hold the sponsor of these attacks, Iran, accountable for what, what they're doing to U.S. forces. Yeah. So how do we do that? I, I'm wondering what your assessment is of the administration's response to all of this. You know, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken yesterday admitted that U.S. aid to Gaza may very well fall in the hands of Hamas. He said this during a Senate Appropriations Committee hearing yesterday. Watch this. Can I promise you in this committee that there'll be 100% uh, delivery to the uh, designated recipients? No. Um, there will inevitably be some spillage. We haven't seen it to date, but I think we have to anticipate that. But the overwhelming, overwhelming majority of the assistance thus far is getting to people who need it, and we need more. So your assessment of how the U.S. has responded to all of this, or Admiral, I mean, we didn't even understand the severity of these attacks on U.S. troops until recently. You know, you're correct about that. You know, we have two big goals here, the, the, the Biden administration does. Number one is get Israel's actions done as fast as possible. And number two, don't let the, uh, the conflict escalate into attacks from, from um, Lebanon uh, by Hezbollah, from from uh, southern Syria and the Golan Heights area mm. or for the West Bank. Unfortunately, that's running head on directly to the Israelis' number one goal, the appropriate one, which is to fully destroy Hamas as a terrorist organization. That's going to take some time. We have to have discipline. We have to get our force posture in place. We have to protect U.S. forces, and we have to support Israel in executing this mission. Admiral Cheryl Cassoni, I want to ask you about the larger issue of Iran right now. A former CIA officer wrote an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal earlier this week talking about the threat of Tehran. Uh, excuse me, Tehran. Prepare for an Iran. You can't sit back and watch Israel crush Hamas absent serious deterrence. They're going to open up a full second front. Now, this is Iran, who we know is funding Hezbollah. We know that they're funding uh, the, the Houthis uh, in Yemen. Uh, we know that they funded the attack of October 7th. Uh, so how does the United States and the administration handle Iran, because so far all they did was let them ship out more oil and make billions more dollars to do all of this. Well, that's a great point. In fact, you know, I'll carry on it and say that Iran's relations with Hezbollah and the Houthis are even tighter than their relations with uh, Hamas uh, before October 7th, although they clearly resourced and trained Hamas extensively over the last decade. And so we have to we have to um, sig signal to Iran that we're going to take. Then, if Iran violates wh whatever precepts we set, we have to strike their forces heavily throughout Iraq and Syria, demonstrate the seriousness and the credibility of our deterrent message. So, if we don't do that, we'll again lose our credibility. Well, I mean, aren't 27 attacks on U.S. troops? Isn't that passing the red line right there? I, I agree with that, and you agree with that. I, I, I think that I mean, at we're this there, point, right? we're, we're there. We, we, and meanwhile, the White House is confirming that President Biden is about to meet with Chinese leader Xi Jinping in San Francisco later this month. Uh, they're going to meet on the sidelines of the APEC meeting, the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit, uh, after China's foreign minister said this weekend that the path toward the meeting would not be smooth sailing. Okay. Going into the meeting, Rear Admiral, I don't know what President Biden thinks he's going to accomplish with Xi Jinping since none of the hot button issues ever come up during these meetings that he has. I don't, I don't see any evidence that he mentioned the cover up of COVID, that he mentioned the years and years of intellectual property theft, that he mentioned the bullying of our ships and our planes in the air. 
Uh, not to mention the fentanyl that comes in regularly from China. What can he accomplish with this meeting in San Francisco? I, I agree with you. Not, not, we want this meeting much more than they do. Exactly. We are. And that's obvious. Yeah. They, that way, and, and when you do, it's very hard to negotiate from a position of strength when you when you appear to be the supplicant at, at every stage of the of the uh, engagement. Yeah. I will tell you the uh, the, the proximity of those uh, Chinese fighters to the U.S. bomber last week was extremely uh, nerve wracking. Ten feet. Yes, it was. Uh, to a large strategic bomber, those 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 aircraft cannot. If we have another high incident like 2001, it won't be easily de-escalated. That's, that is exactly right. And that's what's happening repeatedly in the air for our bombers and on in the sea uh, from, from the ships. Uh, Tiana, you said it a minute ago, uh, weakness on the world stage. Jump in here, Tiana. So right now, Vice President Kamala Harris heading to the UK to join this AI summit earlier this week. Joe Biden coming out with his new AI. Well, oh, board. that's important. Yeah. Can we trust China with regards to any commitment they make about AI safety, especially as we know they're going all in on AI? Or should we just say that they're not a partner in this? Is that something that Joe Biden will be trying to negotiate with, with Xi Jinping on this later uh, this month? Well, you know, I hope uh, B Biden can remember back to 2015 when President Obama met with Xi in the Rose Garden. And President Xi promised two things. One, he would stop island building in the South China Sea. And two, he would stop the incessant cyber attacks intellectual property uh, attacks against U.S. companies. Neither one was true. Within a year, both of those were fully going again. You know, President Xi has not been an honest broker dealing with us. His, he only has one motive, which is to make China a dominant regional global power at the expense of the United States' economic security and national security. Yeah. So, no, he shouldn't trust him. Uh, he should listen to him, but not trust him. Yeah. Here's Adam Johnson. Uh, Admiral Maria mentioned the um, Chinese fighters that strafed uh, U.S. bombers. You're a military man. What's the correct response? Should we have fighters accompany bombers? And if they're engaged, fire a shot at the Chinese? Again, you're the military man. What's the correct response? So you're absolutely right. They, get, they came within 10 feet. There, was, there wasn't any shooting, but you're right. It's, they, it's almost as dangerous as that. With, with, if a collision occurred, as we saw with the EP-3 in 2001, the, the U.S. plane will have to you know, crash land. Um, or, or a crash, and, and you could have U.S. casualties. Look, we have to be more, um, uh, have a better force posture around these freedom of navigation flights and ship actions. The ships can defend themselves pretty well, the U.S. destroyers doing those missions. But you're right, we have to start considering other options. Have a flight of two or four fighters within, within a few miles of our bombers as they go. Look, that has the unintended consequence of, yeah. of, you know, of, of escalating, but at some point, you have to protect yourself against inappropriate and illegal actions by Chinese uh, aircraft and ships. Yeah, Rear Admiral, let me ask you real quick before you go. You're a Navy man. Um, how do you feel about the Navy today, given the fact that the Chinese Navy is actually larger than the United States Navy right now, as uh, Joe Biden the other day admitted that we're running out of ammunition as well? Look, we're, we're about 25 years into, uh, into insufficient funding of a naval force for, for a country that makes so much money through trade and through international engagement. Yeah. We should, you need to have a Navy. Even if you go back to our founding fathers, they understood we had to have a permanent standing Navy yeah. uh, to do these things. Um, and the current budgets are not uh, reflecting the challenge we have. You're absolutely right. The Chinese are building it at unbelievable levels. We absolutely have to have targeted investments. Senator Wicker has been pushing one about our submarine defense industrial base. Mm. There's other uh, that need to be done, but okay. you're absolutely right. You, you know, we can't continue to not compete. Yeah, it's something General Jack Keane pointed out years ago on this program, and he was spot on. Your Admiral, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for weighing in on all of that. Mark Montgomery joining us this morning. Thank you, sir. Quick break, and then Thank protecting you. yourself from data breaches, what you need to do.